Hello all, hope everyone is doing good. Welcome to our presentation. Let's introduce the project members. Akashdeep Sen, Anirvan Mitro, Aparita Roy, Arundhati Paul, Dripto Senapoti, Gaurav Karmakar, Inder Kaur, Mayuk Choudhury, Rishita Kundu, Shairan Mitro and Abhijit Shah. Now next, let's describe the project title. Data analysis and model building on survival prediction of Titanic passengers using Python. What are the data set features? Let's see. Passenger ID, the ID of passengers, the P class, which describes the class of passengers like first, second, or third, the name, sex, age, parts, that is a number of parents or children abroad. SIP SP, that is a number of siblings, spouse abroad, ticket, fare, cabin, embark, that is a port of embarkation, and survived. The source, the data set is collected from Kaggle. Let's have a glance of this Excel data sheet. As you can see, now these are the following stages which you did. In our project understanding the problem definition data exploration or pre-processing predictive model building and development let's go the stage one understanding the problem definition this is the stage where we understand the problem given like here it is said to build a model which can predict who were the titanic passengers survived and who didn't so we can see that the target variable among the 12 features is survived and the rest are independent variables. Look, the survived variables are in 1 or 0, where 1 means survived and 0 means not survived. So clearly we can say that it is a classification problem. Stage 2, the data exploration or the pre-processing part. This is the most vital part where we transform the raw data into some useful and efficient format. Some of the sub-stages that we practice here are reading the file, see the identification of the variables with their descriptions, missing value imputation, outlier treatment and variable transformation if needed. Let's go. Importing libraries and reading the file. The whole project is done in Python Jupyter platform. The libraries that are imported as of now are NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib. After that a CSV file is read from desktop as we can see in the picture above. Few descriptions of the data set are given. We can see. The tightening dataset consists of 891 rows and 12 columns defining the features. The correlations of each continuous features are given with respect to other features. The other information like the data types and the number of values of each features are given. We can observe that name, sex, ticket, cabin and impact like features are all object types that is categorical in nature and there are some missing values in age, keeping and embout, which we will deal soon. Graphical representation and interpretation. These are the three graphs you can see and the description. Let's interpret them. From the first graph, we can interpret that maximum number of passengers didn't survive. Almost more than 500 passengers lost their lives and across 350 survived. In the second graph, we observe that more males lost lives than females. Around 100 males and a bit more than 200 females survived. In the third one, we notice that class 3 passengers lost their lives more than class 1 and 2. Near around 140 class 1, 90 class 2 and 120 class 3 passengers survived the tragedy. Now the most important part, dealing with missing values. As we can clearly see that around 20% age value, 77% caving numbers and 0.22 embark values are missing. What to do? 
let's see it's a very small amount of embark portion is missing and it is categorical feature so we can fill the missed values there with the mode value of that feature in case of cabin we observe that a large portion is missing around 77 percentage so we can drop this feature and walk on and in case of age which is a continuous feature we can impute the mean age and fill those gaps although there are several other techniques that can be implemented to find the missing ages. Hooray! We are now fine with the data set as there are no missing values present. But there are some features like passenger ID, ticket number and name which are of no impact or relevant to survival prediction and hence can be dropped from the data set and make it more clean for use. One hot encoding. This is an another important part which converts the categorical features variable into dummy variables. We know in our data set there are features like embarked sex which need to be encoded in zeros and ones for further steps. So we did it. So this is a clear data set with which we will be working for building the model. Here only the first five rows are shown. Now segregating variables into independent and dependent variable. As you can see all the independent variables are stored in X and the survived column that is the target variable is stored in Y. And then splitting the whole data set into training set and test set. What we did? We did, we split the data set into two major part, giving 75 portion to, the, to train the machine and 75 portion to test it. We can also do 80%, 20%, 90%, 10%. Even we can also break the data set into training set, validation set and test set. Feature scaling. Technically, scaling or normalizing inputs to logistic regression is not required, but scikit-learn works well with scale data, so we will be doing it. Here are the features like age, fare, which can be scaled. We use the min-max scalar function from preprocessing module to normalize the data, keeping all the values between 0 and 1. We can also use standard scalar, which trace all the values between minus 1 and 1. Anyway, as we are now done with the data pre-processing, we can feed a logistic regression model to our train set and test set. The stage 3, model building and development. Implementing the logistic regression. So at first we will be implementing a logistic regression model on this set. Let's import the logistic regression from the linear model module and at the same time also importing the F1 score. Creating the instance log rate of logistic regression model and fitting them to train X and train Y. Now doing the prediction using the predict function. After applying the predict function on the train set we got the F1 score as 75% and on the test set as 74%. We can say that as the F1 score on both the sets are almost equal, the model is overall good. We know more the F1 score, better is the model. The formula for F1. F1 equals to 2 by 1 by precision plus 1 by recall. What's precision? is defined as out of all the positive predictions, how many are actually positive? And what is recall? It defines as out of all the actual positive, how many are predicted positive. The confusion matrix and the accuracy rate. Confusion matrix is a n cross n matrix where n represents the number of classes in the target variable. Now let's interpret it. From the heat map of confusion matrix we observed that 51.7 percent is true negative that is actual value 0 and predicted also 0. 28.7 percent is true positive that is actual value 1 and predicted value also 1. 
a total of 179 values are correctly predicted while 44 values are incorrectly predicted hence the accuracy rate counts to around 80 percent classification report from the re classification report we observe that the precision recall f1 score of 0 and 1 individually and we can focus and see that the scores all the scores of all the scores are more for 0 than 1 which means that predictions are more accurate and correct for 0 than 1 now doing the prediction using the predict proba function we are now doing a probabilistic prediction hence feed the predict proba function to the train set as we can see the output on the left side are all in pairs these are the probability probabilities of two classes whose sum up to one because it is a binary class classification in the next output we can see all the values are between 0 and 1 now setting a threshold value depending on which the distribution of 0 and 1 will take place say the threshold value is 0 0.50 so any probability above 0 0.50 predicts that the if passenger survived and below it predicts that the passenger didn't survive after this f1 score can again be calculated some logistic regression parameters this is an important part in this part we check which of the variables are significant to the model so finding the coefficients of every features the variables with higher coefficients are significant from the coefficient plot as we can see on the left on the right side we observe that there are certain features which are not at all significant hence setting a coefficient value say 0.5 here and selecting those variables which coefficients are greater than that value that is 0.5 so from here to here we can see how the variables have reduced and the important or the significant variable or features are present what are the important features that we finally got are sex female sex male parts 1 parts 3 parts 4 parts 5 cbsp0 cbsp1 cbsp2 cbsp3 cbsp8 so these are the final features that are significant to the survival prediction the AUC ROC curve. The AUC is the area under curve and ROC is receiver operating characteristics. ROC is a trade off between true positives and false positive. Now, using those significant features, we plotted this graph. More the area under this curve, that is the blue line as shown, better is the model. In our case, the area is 78%. Comparing scores with some other algorithms. Not only we did the logistic, but we also import some other machine learning algorithms like K nearest neighbors decision tree and applying them on those significant features. Now see these scores. For the K nearest the first 10 predictions are like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. For the decision tree with the max depth of 4, we can see the predictions. For the first 10 predictions are 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 with a score of 79.8%. And again applying the logistic regression we can see the predicted the first 10 predicted scores are 0 0 1 1 1 1 and the score is like 77.5 percent so out of these three mod uh, models we can see knn is giving the best score with 80.2 percent we also apply the random forest using the random forest classifier with par in parameters n estimators as 100 and max depth as 12 these parameters can be tuned to fetch a more good score anyway our random forest accuracy score is around 79.3 percentage now assembling the models 
Now the best part is assembling the previous models to come up with the final result. Yes, it's interesting. Generally, some basic ensemble techniques are max voting, averaging, weighted averaging, and rank averaging. Here we use the max voting that is taking the mode of the three previous models and finding a satisfactory result. The models we took were KNN model, decision models and logistic model. And now we can see the accuracy score as 80.2% and the predicted score for the first 10 rows are 00011111. As we can see below, there are some advantages of using it. Using this model is that that is the ensembling uh, ensembling techniques is that it can capture multiple signals. It brings the diversity. You know, it reduces the overfitting. All these things are done. So it's a very good practice to ensemble in the models. So this is the end of our project. In the near future, we'll be coming with some more project where the target variable will be continuous and we'll be applying some regression techniques. And so this is the way how we implemented the models different algorithms and anyway the last but not the least we are all grateful to our beloved professor Ganesh Tattu for his continuous support motivation and guidance hope you have liked this video and if you want to get some more notifications from this channel do subscribe it and thank you one and all